If you're planning a destination ski trip to Colorado, Copper has long been a go-to option. The resort is just off I-70 in the middle of the Colorado Front Range, and with a fairly expansive footprint at a reasonable distance from Denver, it makes for a compelling package at a first glance. The resort may not be as flashy as some competitors nearby, but can it deliver on the goods? In this video, we'll take a look at Copper's overall mountain experience, and then we'll go through how it stacks up in our mountain score and overall resort rankings. Before we jump in, you can check out written reviews of Copper and over 50 other destination ski resorts on our website, peakrankings.com. Be sure to like and subscribe to help us grow, and be sure to hit the bell so you don't miss any of our video content. And you can help support us by checking out the new Peak Ranking store, which is linked in the description below. If you're looking for the high quality snow Colorado is famous for, Copper won't let you down. The resort boasts impressive snow quality, with accumulation matching that of the best resorts in the state and offering a decently light and dry consistency. While wind gusts in high alpine areas can get intense, snow tends to stay in the places you want it to. For every windswept face, there's a neighboring bowl area that sees light, deep powder thanks to wind-blown snow. A few more extreme runs maintain low cover or exposed elements throughout the season, but that's to be expected from terrain of this caliber. Copper is a decently big resort, and it can generally be broken into a few areas. The front side is anchored by its three base areas, West Village, Center Village, and East Village. All three of these begin with typical below treeline slopes, but top out in high alpine environments. Beyond the front, there's also a high alpine backside, mainly comprising bowls. And beyond that, there's an even further removed face on Tucker Mountain. As the season progresses, copper tends to open from front to back, with snowmaking on frontside trails aiding consistent early season opening dates. Copper offers a variety of terrain for all abilities. Runs of similar difficulty tend to be in the same area, leading to natural insulation for skiers of different ability levels. In general, runs get harder as you go from west to east on the mountain, with the backside areas offering the most extreme terrain. Unlike some Colorado resorts, Copper offers a variety of beginner terrain. Plenty of green runs can be found to the skiers left of Center Village. West Village areas feature dedicated learning terrain, while the American Flyer Lift services gentle but relatively long cruisers. There's even some high alpine beginner terrain, although it's serviced by the slow, wind-exposed rendezvous lift. Runs of this level are perennially groomed. Copper offers a solid selection of intermediate cruisers. However, runs of this level are on the tougher side. The Super B and American Eagle lifts service a range of long-groomed cruisers. The popular Timberline area offers shorter blues, but also boasts some of the only consistently ungroomed intermediate terrain in Colorado. Some trails are entirely ungroomed, while others maintain an ungroomed section next to a groomed one. Either way, these trails are good opportunities for those learning moguls to get some practice in. Experienced skiers and riders will find a lot to like at Copper. More than half of the resort is made up of black and double black terrain. Black runs and high alpine areas are mainly short, steep pitches, but the lower elevation alpine and resolution areas host long, trying mogul runs. There are also a couple of seriously fast groomers. Some of these runs require steep, rocky traverses to reach. If you're a snowboarder, watch out for these. Challenging tree terrain abounds throughout the resort. Even in lower mountain areas better known for easier slopes, heavily wooded glades off green and blue cruisers prove formidable challenges. Some double blacks at Copper are surprisingly doable for their rating, but don't let that deceive you. Many others prove serious challenges. The resort's toughest runs are in high alpine areas, and most double blacks in these areas involve considerable fall lines or obstacles such as cliffs or rocks. If you're looking for some of the most extreme terrain on the mountain, check out the double blacks on the backside's west ridge. It takes a brief hike to reach some lines, but the area requires a cornice to drop into, maintains a steep pitch, and features tough, cliff-riddled lines. Copper's lift-serviced expert terrain has never been lacking, but the addition of the Three Bears lift has arguably transformed the resort. Wow. Getting to the top of this expert-only area previously required a weather-dependent snowcat ride and a hike, 
but as of early 2020, the resort has offered direct lift service to precipitous technical tree and bull terrain that many other Colorado resorts can't match. High winds, avalanche danger, and the considerable snowpack needed to fill in the terrain make for variable openings, but partially as a result of these circumstances, this zone still takes longer to get tracked out than other resort areas. The fantastic views and isolation in this area adds to the experience. However, if you last visited Tucker Mountain before the lift was installed, you might miss the remoteness the area used to have. If you've done cat skiing here before, you might notice that a small amount of the bottom part of Tucker terrain has been cut off to facilitate lift access. However, you're not really missing much. Like other mountains with Woodward Terrain Parks, Copper's freestyle experience is excellent. Features are designed with progression in mind, making the resort ideal for visitors looking to build confidence on boxes, rails, and jumps. But the resort also boasts some truly world-class features, such as a 13-foot quarter pipe and a 22-foot half pipe, and hosts major competitions such as the Half Pipe World Cup each season. One part about Copper that might discourage some prospective visitors is the altitude. Even some experienced skiers and riders will find themselves struggling on the slopes due to the considerable height. At 9,600 feet, the resort boasts one of the highest base elevations in North America. Additionally, the resort tops out at 12,400 feet, a few thousand feet higher than the highest terrain at many competing mountains. In this environment, be sure to exhibit extra caution before attempting anything risky. It's pretty easy to get around copper, but there are a few issues. The resort has decent signage, as well as these really big signs as you get towards the base area. However, these base signs do not have lift directions. You will be aided by safety bar mounted trail maps on most lower mountain lifts and trail status boards in major junction areas. The act of physically skiing or riding from place to place generally isn't bad, but there are a few flat catwalks. If you're advanced or expert, the mountain's biggest annoyance is getting from the backside to the resolution and spalding areas. There's no direct way to do this, and the trek requires going all the way back to one of the base areas. However, going the other way isn't too bad. Also note that if you're leaving the resort from the East Village, you may have to cross over a tubing hill. Copper's biggest shortfall, at least compared to other Colorado destinations, is its lift infrastructure. That's not to say it's actually bad. Several lifts are high speed, including nearly all lower mountain lifts. And the flagship American Eagle Chondola and American Flyer Bubble Lift provide impressive and comfortable rides. But multiple major parts of the mountain, including all high alpine areas, maintain slow, fixed grip lift service. Many of these lifts are old and difficult to load, and some are highly exposed to wind, making the ride not comfortable. If you're not used to surface lifts, making it to the backside might be tough. However, the worst offenders live mainly in advanced and expert terrain areas, minimizing the overall resort impact. While Copper can get busy like other nearby resorts, the mountain enjoys decent crowd flow thanks to generally well-placed lifts. The resort's base areas benefit from high-capacity lifts, although morning lines can still be a problem on weekends and holidays. Lower-capacity upper mountain lifts can get backed up, but these predominantly advanced and expert areas rarely see horrible crowds. Once the morning crowds subside, the Timberline Express Lift is typically the resort's biggest choke point. This high-speed lift services popular intermediate terrain, sees multiple high alpine trails filter into it, and provides the only convenient access from the west side of the mountain to upper resort areas. For the 2021-22 season, the resort has introduced the hotly debated Fast Tracks program, which allows guests to pay a premium to skip the lines of many popular lifts. Copper's on-mountain facilities are both impressive and frustrating. Base areas boast high-capacity lodges and restaurants, and the front side offers convenient mid-mountain spots to stop in for breaks. One of these, at the top of American Flyer, is in the process of being rebuilt. However, the Copper Bowl and Tucker Mountain areas lack lodges entirely, meaning that if you're in these areas, you'll have to engage on a long trek to get inside. To give the resort some credit, however, these backside areas do enjoy relatively convenient bathroom access at the bottom of the mountain chief lift. Copper offers the impressive, distinctive feel you'd expect from a large Colorado ski resort. High alpine areas provide fantastic views and great isolation, and multiple striking mountain ranges surround the resort. Some competing mountains are actually in sight, and this range here is actually the back of Breckenridge. 
Copper's base areas aren't too built up. However, the major I-70 interstate highway runs near the base of the resort. The road is prominent in some lower mountain areas and produces some less than ideal background noise. That being said, eastern resort areas and back bowls are much more remote and removed from this road. One reason you might want to visit Copper is for the value. The resort offers a range of pre-season lift ticket deals, including a cheap, flexible four-day pass that many locals save for powder days. On Thursdays, the resort sells a limited number of $99 tickets. The resort is on the Icon Pass, but blackout dates on the Base Pass don't apply here. So no, Copper isn't as competitive infrastructure-wise as some other Colorado mountains. But the resort delivers impressive terrain and a local feel that's tough to beat. There are certainly fancier resorts out there, but it's hard to find another mountain that caters so well to such an array of abilities. Copper is not the best mountain in Colorado for its $200 weekend lift ticket price, but it's easy to find advanced purchase options that fit the budget, and a number of them make the resort quite a good deal for what you get if you commit early enough. Now let's go through how Copper stacks up in our overall rankings, which are determined by the following 10 category mountain score. Copper enjoys light, dry Colorado snow and boasts some awesome wind-blown powder stashes, earning an 8 for snow. The resort gets a lot of its terrain open quickly, but some upper mountain areas see wind holds and Tucker Mountain takes a while to open, and the resort gets an 8 for resiliency. Copper offers just over 2,500 skiable acres and is over 3,600 acres from boundary to boundary and gets an 8 for size. Copper offers nearly everything for everyone except the truly most extreme terrain and gets a 9 for terrain diversity. Copper has some very technical terrain and some long demanding mogul runs and gets an 8 for challenge. Copper has a mix of modern high speed lifts and slow fixed grip chairs. About 5% of the resort is hiked to and the resort gets a 5 for lifts. Despite not being the most modern, the resort enjoys well placed lifts with solid capacity and gets a 7 for crowd flow. Indoor lodges are widespread in lower mountain areas but lacking in more remote ones and the resort gets a 6 for facilities. Copper is big, but generally straightforward to get around, although there are some frustrating situations and the resort gets a 6 for navigation. And finally, mountain aesthetic. Copper isn't as removed from the highway as some might prefer, but the resort enjoys a beautiful distinct footprint and striking vistas of nearby mountains, and gets an 8 in this category. So in total, the resort gets an overall mountain score of 73, tying it for 6th in Colorado and 12th overall. You should check out Copper if you're attracted by its excellent high alpine terrain experience, natural insulation for skiers of different ability levels, and a more local vibe than some nearby competitors. But you should skip it if you're not into the slow lifts outside base areas, or a lack of lodges on the backside, or you don't do well in high altitudes. Copper isn't perfect, but if you're looking for the diverse high alpine terrain Colorado is known for, you won't be disappointed.